This is your host, Abdul Bhartia, and we are back with Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder at Rackend, to get an update on what he saw or uh, experienced at AWS reInvent last week. Uh, first of all, tell us, you know, uh, after, you know, all this pandemic and a lot of things happening in the cloud, cost-cutting, layoff, what is the sentiment that you, you felt there? Oh boy, you know, it, it didn't feel like a big cost cutting show. There wasn't a lot of discussion about pullback. There wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of discussion about cost cutting. Um, there, you know, the show attendance was, was not 2019 level, but it was definitely high. It was, you know, there, there were a lot of people. Um, There's a lot of enthusiasm. Mood was positive. Um, there was some mumbling that, um, People, you know, they had to lock in their purchases for the show um, a long time back. And so you might have some people who would have chosen maybe less presents or, or expensive presents. Um, definitely some vendors spent a lot of money at that show. Um, with, without a doubt, that was obvious. Amazon, AWS, they make a lot of announcement. It's hard to track all the announcements that they make. Uh, from your perspective, what were some of the key announcements that you felt of course, you know, we will also talk about in context of Rack and but in general. And this is what was strange about this show. There weren't a lot of groundbreaking announcements. Um, normally we expect Amazon to really show a lot of innovation. Um, the announcements that got a lot of time um, or attention in conversations were really not that significant or even worse, were confusing. So a big announcement was that they eliminated cold starts for Lambda. Um, that's a big deal but it's not something they made a big announcement on. Um, Werner's keynote spent you know, like 15 minutes talking about the introduction of pipes for the events uh, system, which you know, is an important handy feature, but it's, it's not on the class of some of the things they've announced in the past. Um, and the fact that that got so much airtime is a symptom of the fact that they're doing what they should do, which is improving the service and taking customer feedback. I think that's great, it's just not, Amazon's, you know, ex the expectations that we've set with Amazon, which I actually don't think are that healthy, are that they're going to drop a whole bunch of, of really impressive features. And the other features that they did announce, things like um, supply chain services, actually felt like products, not platform components. And so it's a little confusing to see, are they still building components for a platform or getting into the product business? Um, and if they get into the product business, I think that's a pretty major shift. So I, I didn't, you know, I came away from those uh, presentations actually a little bit more confused rather than, you know, having more clarity on Amazon's mission. Whenever these kind of events happen, you also talk to a lot of people, you also feel the pulse of the industry. So when you talk about, you know, your own what, what did you hear from other folks that you spoke in terms of some of these announcements where you feel that the focus was on product versus platform? This was something that we are seeing there's a lot of leadership changes in Amazon at the moment. And so there is a degree of expectation that we're going to see some reframing on how Amazon wants to go about its services. Um, the thing that isn't as clear is whether these products are really mission driven products or convenience where they're building something for themselves for Amazon.com or for a, a large customer target was highlighted a lot. Um, and then making those more generally available. So I, I wasn't able to get a lot of clarity, frankly, in conversations that we, we had with people. Um, and I, I was talking to analysts, I was talking to friends, I was talking to customers. Um, there wasn't really a heartbeat of what people felt the show was about in this time. And, and that's okay, it's not, a, it's not a bad thing. People are using Amazon, they're, they're looking to get more value. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that we should talk about is the, the focus on data, data analytics, and, and big data. Yeah, so, so talk about um, big data. Place to start with the big data is when walking the floor, it felt like fully a third of the floor was about big data, analytics, observability, you know, collecting and analyzing data, um, both in terms of spend, so the, the amount of the booth sizes of the, the major vendors who are in that, that you know, data lake, <laughs> data lake house, um, analytics, observability, elastic search, logging, those things dominated the floor. Um, 
the people who were doing hybrid multi-cloud were sort of doing it quietly or DevOps were doing it quietly. A lot of the other pieces were not as, were, were there, but not as loud, not as noisy. And so, you know, it's very clear that people are using the infrastructure for data analytics, and it's a major piece. Even Amazon's keynotes and, and addresses, they did a lot to talk about improving data analytics, both in new instance types for it, new integrations for it, improving how the system connects together. Um, so a lot of the integrations they're doing are directly around the data space. Uh, so, and the in inference for me here is that that's where a lot of money is being spent. Any announcements related to uh, data analytics or any data related? To there were several things that improved how ETL was done. So um, the, the transform and load component of data analytics, what they were doing is breaking down the barriers between services. So they're making it much easier to take storage that is in Amazon and then apply analytics to it. Uh, and I think that's a very welcome, considering the, the way the show is structured in this, this year, those are very welcome things for their customers. And, and they're, they're clearly answering the fact that so much data analytics is being done on, on Amazon and on AWS. Um, I think it's, it's very telling for that, that they, they spent a lot of time talking about that. What does it mean from Racken's perspective? Racken is an infrastructure as code, you know, hybrid multi-cloud platform. We're really working around what platform teams need, how to be more consistent and collaborative across different infrastructures. And one of the themes that keeps coming up at reInvent is the increasing complexity of the AWS, really all the cloud platforms. AWS is leading in the number of services they have and instance types and things like that. And they aren't really announcing a lot of um, ease of use or improved integrations. And so from my perspective, it's rack end, you know, we are very happy to help customers create much more consistent integrated experiences around these platforms. And so the idea that you need to have um, a team of people dedicated to helping manage re you know, Amazon is become the norm. Um, and actually, it's one of the other things to point out when you look at spend and who's, who's making a lot of noise and spending a lot of money at reInvent. The other major category of spend is on the service providers. When, when you walk the floor or you look at the private parties or who's uh, buying a, a bar during the week so that they can provide a, a luxury lounge for their customers or their prospects, it is the service providers, the, you know, the Accentures, the Kindrels, uh, the DCX, DXCs, um, right? They are spending, IBM, Red Hat, you know, they're spending a lot of money because they are, you know, earning a lot helping customers navigate reInvent or AWS. Um, and so it's very clear that that is a major source of revenue. Um, as always, how Amazon approaches partners is, is not, you know, I haven't, I, I ask that question a lot and I don't always get a very clear answer um, because Amazon's own consulting services are really coming up. And so Amazon's doing a lot more of that consulting also. And so, you know, the partners here are trying to figure out, you know, if Amazon is going to come in to their space, the, the consulting and services space and the enterprise space. Um, the answer is always yes. It's a, just a question of how much and, and how you collaborate with, with a company as large as, as Amazon. So now we have been talking about some core tech stack here, but let's also talk about some of the emerging markets, some of the emerging areas where it could be gaming, it could be AI ML, it could be voice assistant, it could be, you know, a lot of other things. What are the new things that you saw there uh, in terms of new markets? So without a doubt, AI ML drew attention and got a lot of time. As a matter of fact, they had a, a really nice Unreal Engine um, connection where they were talking about how they were doing it. They also had something with Siemens where they were talking about uh, Siemens tools and AR, VR, uh, you know, the, the fusion coming in with those pieces. Um, without a doubt, that is something they invested time in, but it wasn't, it didn't feel like a primary focus. We're still looking for that AR, VR, you know, reality. I didn't see a lot of AR, VR uh, components except the normal, like put on goggles and race cars in a booth. Um, as a matter of fact, they didn't have a lot of edge conversations in general. So they had some IoT, but a lot of it was around AI ML and, and analysis rather than things like outposts. As a matter of fact, I don't remember any outpost 
conversation and there weren't outposts on the floor that I could see like they've had in the past or they didn't drive a you know a truck with a whole bunch of uh, glaciers, snowballs and whatever else they call the cold storage pieces. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Those were really not as much of a focus at this show as we've seen in the past. When you walk into some shows, you saw that so, say the whole theme is around this particular area or topic. Was there anything like that? I mean, that that was everywhere you turned. It was AIML, data ingest, data lake, um, you know, analytics, you know, pipelines. There was a lot of um, event pipelines where things were being connected together. Um, you know, the messaging at, at Amazon events is very tightly controlled. So, you know, some vendors that I saw that were like high, you know, multi-cloud or hybrid cloud vendors, they're I actually saw a booth that only had the name of the vendor on it. Um, and they had pulled off all of the other, you know, hybrid multi-cloud um, components like that. Um, and so that, you know, for the vendors that, that I watch very carefully in market, it, they were they were noticeably sort of, here's our brand, here's the name of our product, and not a lot of additional detail until you walked into the booth itself. Um, and I think that's a really interesting phenomenon of, of how this works, right? Amazon, you know, in the last several years has been much more acknowledgement, has a, had a lot more acknowledgement of hybrid and multi-cloud, but they're still very wary of cross-promotion from that perspective. And so, you know, it's clear to me that there are places where it's easy to talk about collaboration around AI ML, uh, data ingest, observability, things like that, uh, consulting and partnerships. Um, some of the other pieces are a little bit a little bit trickier. Of course, you know uh, my career has been all about open source. We here at TFI also we talk a lot about open source. Now it's it's not pure open source. We do talk about you know you have to mix and match as we have had a discussion a couple of times. But how much open source or open source discussions did you hear at the event? It's it really isn't a, a, an even less than usual an open source show. I mean, there's clearly a lot of open source technologies being used, but it's not an open source community show. Amazon's not bragging about their open source engagement and interactions, and the vendors aren't really talking about open source. So unlike a KubeCon where people lead with we are open source something or other, this is really a show where the vendors are vendors um, using open source, but not not bragging on it as they're bona fide. I saw one vendor um, who was talking about an open source, you know, that developers love or something like that, but it was, you know, more rare and far between. Another thing that is important in open source communities, I think, is the ESG component. And, you know, one of the, the conversations I had, are, um, you know, actually this came up a couple of times, is just Amazon is not quite as far ahead as other providers in, um, you know, energy consumption disclosure. They might be doing great on the actual, you know, data center efficiencies themselves, but um, we have a ways to go on ESG components. And they, they talked about it without a doubt. It's an important topic um, for any major data center consumer, but... Um, the sen I, I didn't see them bragging on that the way, say, a Microsoft or a Google is, um, because Amazon's got a little catch up to do in that area. Rob, once again, thank you so much for taking time out and share with us, you know, uh, your insights on AWS Reinvent. Unfortunately, we were not there. <laughs> we had a lot of catch up to do from the KubeCon itself. So, but next time we'll be there and then we'll do something on site as well as we do at other events. But I really appreciate your insights today. Thank you. My pleasure. Glad to bring you up to speed.